All right, hello and welcome to another tutorial in Maya. Today we're going to take a look at a simple 2D composite and we're going to start out in After Effects right now. And as you can see, there is some smoke rising from the chimney just like we uh, would expect it to. And I have a little bit of snow over the front. Now, this is just a basic 2D concept to kind of illustrate how a 2D fluid effect can be used um, relatively conservatively. Um, if it's for an effect like this or cartoon smoke or whatever, um, and you need to lay it into a 2D composite, this is what 2D containers are perfect for. So anyway, this is a real simple composite just showing you the benefits of what we can do with these things. Now, I have two of them going on here uh, right now. If I were to, um, let's take one of those off of there. Uh, one of them that I output earlier was just sort of a, you know, a wispy type smoke and, uh, you know, basically does what it does. But then by adding another one on top of that, you can see where you get a little bit more interesting, you know, smoke effects and, uh, you know, just sort of breaks it up a little bit. So that's what we're going to take a look at today. Um, and it's really cool and it's really easy to do. So let's work with a 2D uh, fluid container to make this smoke. All right, uh, let's get out of After Effects. Um, but before we get on with things, um, let's just come down here and take a look at um, Lester Banks. Always go to Lester because he has some of the best stuff in Maya, After Effects. Um, he has uh, the Green Soda TV link here for Alex Villabon's Green Soda TV. There he is, Alex. Uh, shout out to Alex. Uh, he features me on his Green Soda um, webcasts. And, uh, you know, Lester writes me up uh, every now and then in his, his blog there. So these are really two great resources for, um, you know, just getting more more stuff on Maya and really interesting stuff. Uh, Lester digs out the, uh, the best stuff on the Internet. And he finds it and puts it out there for you. So lots of good stuff there. So anyway, go check those guys out. Um, I'm going to quit After Effects here, and we don't need to save that. And let's get into um, to Maya for a second and take a look at exactly what's happening here. Here is just basically that image, and I just went to View and Image Plane, Import Image, and imported that image, no big deal, and then created this uh, fluid container. So if I start at the beginning of the animation, I was just sort of messing around with one here, got a starting point and, uh, you know, just sort of setting it up because there's a couple things you're going to want to do to make this stuff kind of look realistic to begin with. Um, and there it is. If I do a quick render of the scene, what we have right now, uh, there it is. So yeah, you can tell where that kind of looks like that and, you know, has a little bit of opacity to it, which is real nice. And I'm in metal ray production settings default, so no big deal there. Okay, so let's come over here and maybe get rid of this one and create uh, create an entirely new uh, fluid effect. So by just you know clicking on the fluid over here, you'll see that the shape and the uh, the emitter is parented to that um, fluid container. So I'm just going to delete that. And um, let's see here. Let's see if we can come up into the the perspective view there. And what we'll do is just create a, um, a 2D fluid container. So it, make sure you're in your dynamics menu set. Come over to your fluid effects. Go down to create 2D container with emitter. And um, you know you might want to go back and just reset your settings. Give it a name. There you go. And we'll just stay with the default settings for the moment. So I'll hit apply and close. Great. Well, here it is. Um, if we take a, a play on it at the moment, we'll go back to the beginning of the animation and hit play and you'll see that by default that's kind of what our default fluid container does. And uh, we're going to work with this a little bit more and sort of make it uh, look a lot better. All right. So if you uh, tool around and just sort of, you know, maybe maybe get that thing lined up to where it would normally be and, um, you know, at this point make sure you look in your outliner, grab your fluid, and uh, we'll move it up to kind of where it should be. Now, in some cases, I like to move this emitter down to the bottom because that just gives my, my, uh, my fluid container more space for this stuff to move around in a more natural way. So at this point, I might want to 
choose my fluid emitter, just the emitter, and move it down to the bottom of that container. And um, because it's parented to that container, it'll move around when I select this fluid from up here. So there I selected that fluid, and now maybe we'll just move this, uh, this emitter somewhere right in there. And when we're dealing with 2D containers and also importing an image, um, we're just dealing with X and... Uh, X and Y space. We're not dealing with Z depth or from you know foreground to background. So really that's kind of what it should be looking like. So we'll go ahead and, and go back to the very beginning of the animation. We'll press play, see what happens. All right, well it's hitting the top of the box and it's coming back in on itself and it's sort of doing what smoke would do inside of a 2D box like that. If you do a quick render, you'll notice you don't want anything that looks like that. Okay, so let's sort of uh, get rid of the problems with this thing first. Um, immediately we want to open up the sides and the top. So let's make sure we have our fluid shape, uh, fluid shape selected there. And we're going to take the boundary of the X right here to a negative. That'll let stuff out the sides. And we'll go to a negative Y on the top and that will let Flew it out the top. Now, we'll just sort of take a quick, you know, quick preview of this and see what uh, what it's doing now. All right. Well, we have escaping out of the top, and now it's sort of doing its thing, and it's uh, you know doubling back on itself. You'll see where it starts to kind of get into its own pattern and doing stuff, and you know, it's just the way that these containers are set up. So I don't like the look of that at all. Of what's that that's doing. So. We're going to switch that up next. All right, so let's come over here and take a look at what we did. We created a 2D fluid container with an emitter in there, and it by default has some density and some velocity attached to it. So we could play around with those two first. We don't really have to worry about temperature necessarily, although if you set this to dynamic grid, that will open up your properties down here and it'll turn on your temperature properties. So just be aware of that, that um, a lot of times when you're dealing with these con fluid containers that you need to be set to dynamic grid to make things happen, you know? So if something is off, well, then you don't have control over those properties in, in that emitter. So anyway, just something to be aware of. All right, well, I know that um, we don't really like it, what it's doing here. So I'm gonna maybe switch the size up first and extend the top up here to give this, um, a little bit more flow to it so we'll go in here and maybe set our size up to a, a 20 on the top range up there and I'll go ahead and, and do a, another we'll do another render here okay so it's it's going up to the top and it's moving around and it's fairly static it, it doesn't have much motion yet because we really haven't messed around with any of the other properties so you know I can tell that it's kinda you know it's kind of doing what it would do. Okay, so now let's put some motion into this. Some of the first things you'll be concerned with with getting a little bit more, you know, realistic look out of this is maybe maybe working with the velocity and and the swirl a little bit. So, you know, let's just maybe bring the swirl up to halfway, and we'll go back and take a take another play on it. And there you go. So that swirl's actually doing pretty good right there. Um, I can uh, pause this and we'll take a play. It all depends on, on what you're after. You know, at this point, it's all about fine tuning through some of these other, um, these options over here. And as you can see, it, it has a color. Right now it has sort of a, a orangish yellowish tinge. Well, let's boost up that density scale a little bit and look at it a little bit more. So I just boosted the density up. If I bring this density all the way up here, let's take another render and you'll notice this even more. It, it has sort of a fire color to it and that's sort of the default color and shading of the ramp. So you know you can find that down here underneath your, uh, your incandescent values. So normally if you're trying to match something in a sky like this, I just need kind of a smoke that looks like this and not like that. So. I might want to switch this this incandescent ramp up a little bit and maybe just sort of set some gray points um, you know maybe a white point right there and uh, so now we can maybe take another render and see what that looks like all right so it's turning out whitish um, obviously you can you know play around with your opacity and everything from down here you can sort of we can make it uh, less opaque yeah we can kind of give it 
give it a little bit lessened effect there. And remember, you can always play around with your opacity from up in here too. So really it's a fine tuning these two things, your colors and your, your you know, bias, whether it's gonna be heavier toward this end of the ramp or colored more toward this end of the ramp. Plus, you know, down here, you might wanna set this to, well, right now density is okay because we're working with dem density. So anyway, just something to be aware of. And that's about it. Now, let's go up here and fix let's see here it's uh, we want to kind of add a little bit more swirl to it and we kind of want to um i kind of want to make it go uh, add a little bit of noise to the swirl which will sort of give it a instead of just an upward motion it will give it a little bit more randomness so so we can go into there there it goes Yeah, so it's just a matter of playing around with it at this point and getting it to, you know, really where you want it, um, where it's going to look the best for you. And that's about it. So let's see here. Let's do a quick render. And that's kind of what it's looking like in the scene. So you really, you can't really judge that it's going to look like this. You really have to do a render. And obviously the higher resolution graphics you have, the better something like this will look. Um, this was just a, an image that I found on the internet. It's like one of those you pause and go, oh, that's a pretty picture and <laughs> do a command save on it, you know. Uh, so anyway, I saved this image. out. I just kind of liked it because it had had a good feel to it. And it sort of, you know, uh, you know, it, 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 this lend itself really well to showing you how to use a 2D fluid effect in a composite. So that's all. Okay, so anyway, uh, the next thing you want to do is once you get something that you like up here, like say you, you like what, what's going on with your smoke and you're just about ready to, to um, you know, output it, let's go back here and, you know, make sure your fluid's selected there and, and come into your fluid cache, create new cache, and this will basically create a new fluid cache for you so that it, it um, remembers, you know, all of this as an effect. All right. And there you go. So now it's ready to be rendered out. And you know, typically you would just render this out as a smoke effect. You would not render this image plane in there. So, you know, there's a couple ways you could do it. If you wanted to just get rid of your image plane, you could come over into your outliner and just delete your image plane. Or, you know, you could bring your image plane um, alpha down to like say zero, and then it won't have any contribution to, you know, it won't have any contribution to that. So, so there you go. And then you know, as you render that out, you would just uh, set up your render settings and there you go. So that's that. Now, there is one other thing to sort of be aware of with the 2D fluid container, and that is if you come up here to your 2D fluid container, you know, you have various resolutions you can set this at. Um, in this case, I needed kind of a soft um, look and whatnot for the, you know, the smoke. So this base resolution, the higher you bring it up, you know, obviously the, uh, the more detailed your, uh, your fluids are going to look. So I'll just double that up a little bit and we'll sort of go over here and uh, do a quick render. Of course, it's just going to show that little bit. So no big deal. It's right there. But anyway, that's something to keep aware of your resolution. It's going to increase your render time a little bit and, um, you know, just pay attention to that. So, you know, there's other things you can play around with here too. Now on your, you get your density scale. You can always, you know, fine tune this. You can add some dissipation to it. Uh, let's see what I can, let's go back to the beginning here and, and I'll just kind of show you what, there's the effect there. Yeah, well, it doesn't show up too well. But anyway, play around with your dissipation, you know, bring that all the way down or all the way up. Just do some extreme tests on these to see where you, you know, where it falls in the best. And uh, that's about it. Maybe add some turbulence. Uh, right now I don't have any turbulence in there, but if I bring that up a tiny bit, you know, now I'll have some little bit of turbulence introduced into the overall, overall effect. So play around with it. That's how it works. And, uh, let's see if we can get back to our, back to our regular, there's our image plane. Let's bring that back up to one and there you go. Okay. So there it is a simple 2d fluid container. And remember you can, uh, the imagination is the key here. This smoke could be layered. If you did a, a three or four layer, you know, 2d composite, 
um, and did a zoom in or a zoom out or some pan side to side, these things, you know, can stick anywhere you want to put them once you composite them in, in with af in After Effects. So that's it. Okay. So I hope we got everything in. I hope you learned something and, um, you know, go forth and create some good 2D fluid effect composites. All right. So thanks for watching, and as always, be a great person to everyone you know and those that you don't, <laughs> and uh, read a book sometimes, and the news, and, you know, just do all that. All right, well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.